Okay. Hello and welcome. My name is Lavina Archers. Welcome. What I'd like to do today, the reason why I have invited you here to join me for this program is um, the Splenic Center, which is the home of our physical, innate intelligence of the body, our physical well-being, our survival instincts, is so important for each of you to understand what it is for you. So I'm going to keep it as simple as possible and basic as possible for those of you who are new, but for those of you who are learning, there's also going to be a lot more of the detailed nuances and subtleties in this giant presentation that myself and um, my fellow um, co-conspirator, I'll call her Fran, who has helped me develop this presentation to something really beautiful, gives us a big picture view. And then today, because it is a first line day, we're also going to go down into the nuances and subtleties. Okay, so if you don't know me again, this is Lavina. Hi, I'm a three five and I'm a projector. And I tend to find that I experience and learn things the hard way. And when I found something that's practical, I can then universalize that and change your fate in order to help you develop into the person that you were born to be, because that's the kind of advisor that I am. So what I'm going to take you through right now is a Living Your Design Awakening program for projectors. If you're not a projector, a lot of this will still apply. But I'm speaking specifically to those of you who are really wanting to study human design and master it. Master it not only for personal benefits, but perhaps professional benefits as well. Uh, those of you who are in the class, the course, I am going to send you, of course, um, the full presentation. You've already gotten it for, for those of you who are in this room right now. And there's some hidden nuggets and some beautiful quotes, some links to videos embedded in the PDF, also links to additional resources, blog posts that I, I have written or maybe on our website, Jovian Archive as well. I wanted to highlight this at the beginning, though, because... You kind of have to find the fun in life, and that's what the Splenic Center is about. You have to find the humor in life in order to bear it, because sometimes it's so freaking painful. It's so horrifying, and it's so filled with suffering, especially if you're someone like me who is an emotional person that tends to take life really seriously, and there's a lot of drama, and there's a lot of trauma that we go through. Here, Ra is highlighting how often has one walked away from a serious accident laughing. The giggling survivor is an ancient response to cheating death. And what is important to grasp is that splenic beings, so if you've got a um, body graph, here's my husband's chart, where the center that is on the left-hand side of the body graph that looks like a triangle pointed in towards that sacral center, if it's colored in, colored in brown there, you are somebody who is splenic, consistently intuitive, instinctive, and aware of your body's innate intelligence. And the fears for survival are there for you to trust, okay? So if you're splenic, oops, let me go back here. There I am. If you're splenic, you're likely to find the humor and life experiences. And that's one of the reasons why I really like having my defined splenic husband around because I have it undefined. And when you have it undefined, what tends to happen, all of those fears that are there get magnified. And if you believe the fear that's speaking inside of your head about yourself. So if you look down at that body graph, you've got an undefined splenic center. My fear of going extinct magnified in this past five weeks now. That I've been sick. My fear of not having the ability to survive on the physical plane, that my life would fail, that I wouldn't be able to achieve my life's purpose in this life because I might die. That mind trip, that is not where we place our decisions. And yet so often, isn't it true? You think I, 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 me, me, me. You talk with the I and the me voice, but is that really your authority? For the vast majority of us, it is not. Authority is somewhere else in the body graph. If you have an undefined function, whatever it happens to be, that is not where you place your decisions. I'm just going to move this over here because I'm always used to going over on that side for this. <clears throat> so in this Living Your Projector Design Awakening Success Secrets, I'm going to dive into the survival fear programming. And uh, thank you, Jasmine, for letting me know. Totally fine to be off camera right now. Um, let me just... Double check 
if there's anything that you guys need from me, please feel, to, feel free to unmute and ask for those of you that are in the room with me. And for those of you who are watching the live stream, feel free to write something down below and one of us will be able to get back with you. Okay. So when we're looking at this, I want you to have your body graph in front of you so that you can know what I'm speaking to if I address a specific gate or trait. First, we're going to start with some, some very basics, and then we'll go into the nuances and subtleties of this center. Now, your awareness centers there are three. This is where we find the definition of all human fears. Awareness centers are where we can perceive what is going on, where we can have an aware experience of our life. And primarily, it's about self awareness for the most part, right? Our place within the whole of the totality, as far as our emotional and our social relational fears, that's the solar plexus on the other side of the body graph. Up here, we have the awareness, the mental awareness that operates over all time. Time is a big factor when we take into account fears. This is mental anxiety up here about the past, the present, the future. But what we're talking about today is the instinctive, intuitive, spontaneous, in-the-moment awareness that is about your body's innate intelligence. So here is where we have the root of all fears and awarenesses for your body's survival. And it's part, <coughs> excuse me, it's part of how we understand how to survive and thrive on the physical material plane. So you can see here we have several different kinds of centers, five to be exact, and three awareness centers that all operate on different time frequencies. Why is that important? Because the splenic center is our survival awareness that is that little tiny hunch, that instinctive knowing, that intuitive awareness, the smell that something's off, the recognition that the patterns aren't fitting in together, they're not lighting up it, a way forward that's healthy, that provides safety and security and survival. And that spontaneous ability to joke and to bring lightheartedness and spontaneity into the world, that's what this splenic center does. Have you ever <clears throat> watched a video, like movies, you know, had, went on one of those binges. I, I bet a lot of us have been doing binges lately, right? Because of the COVID-19 staying at home and, and such. Have you ever been on a binge and been watching a lot of the um, comedy channel or movie, whatever it happens to be? Can you feel how, as long as it's lighthearted, it's not like that screaming laughter that leaves you, you know, with stitches and you feel sick to your stomach afterwards, but it's this, yeah, this lightening up. That lightening up is absolutely needed because if you don't have that lightening up, what do you have on the other side? You have this heaviness, maybe the sorrow, the suffering, the sadness. So there's a lot there for the splenic survival intelligence, survival awareness that needs to be celebrated, shine a spotlight on it. I want you guys to be able to see who you are for yourself if you're a generator, for the other if you're a projector. How do you impact if you're a manifester? Because this is the consistency, if it's colored in, of how you are here to be you. Okay. Now, the three different kinds of awareness centers are different in frequency, like I mentioned, not only from the time perspective, but from also the sound perspective, the resonance vibrational frequency of what it broadcasts out into the world. So what we're looking at today is the quietest awareness center that we have. There are seven projected channels here and two generated channels. Now, as far as the sound of it, it's very quiet. It's, it's almost like a whisper sometimes, a hunch. It might be the skin on your, on your body getting chicken skin or goosebumps, you know, having the, the hairs raising on your arms or the back of your neck. It's something that speaks to you all over your body. There's a common misconception that this is the spleen itself because a lot of people call it the spleen for short. But it's actually a whole lot more than just that simple organ. This is your immune system. 
And now twice as loud as that is the noisy mental consciousness that operates over all time. That mental consciousness can drive you to make mental decisions that ignore your splenic intuitive awareness or your instincts or your hunches because it's louder and it's jabbery and it's constant and it goes back into the past. It goes all forward into the future and it tells you, no, this is what it means. Believe me, trust me, I know. But if this is colored in, if anything is colored in below this throat center, there is a place within your body that is your actual authority that makes the decisions for you so that you can be safe and healthy and experience the life that you were born for. Now, down here, this is twice as loud as the ashna. That's the solar plexus, the emotional intelligence. We call it as a function. So emotional intelligence, which screams, have you ever seen somebody who has this defined in a bad mood? saw that this morning. <laughs> you know, you have this, this rage that comes out of you, or you have this deep adrenalized bitterness that shows up as resentment, or you blow your top because you're not getting what you need in your community or in your relationship. Those are things that are very, very loud and can drown out the instinctive, quiet, intuitive awareness of your splenic center. So, the body talks to you. The body has an intelligence and a knowing. If you can remember nothing else from this presentation that I, I share with you today, I want to ask you, invite you, um, challenge you to make a difference from this day forward between the mind that talks inside of your head about yourself <clears throat> and the body and how it feels or presents itself into the world. Have you ever noticed your mind cycling, it's spiraling down with all this, oh, poor me, why me, this is happening and I'm in so much pain and you start to believe that and oh, maybe it's because it's their fault, I can't believe. Here's my story, my mind was telling me for the COVID-19. I cannot believe that my child's school didn't tell me that they had children in China in January. I cannot believe that I trusted them. I gave my child over to this school thinking that it's going to be great. It's a Montessori school. How wonderful. She comes home and later that weekend, she's sick as a dog. I mean, I've never seen her that sick, really, really sick. And then two weeks later, I take my husband to the hospital and then I've got it the next week. I mean, my mind went into the blame game. Is that going to help anything? As a wide split, I tend to blame the other. I, meaning the conscious thinking mind inside of the head that identifies with I, who I think I am. That is not helpful. So what do we do? What is the practical takeaway here? When you hear your mind saying, blah, 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 it's their fault, it's my fault, there's something wrong here, let me figure it out, I'm going to do this, next time I'm going to do that, I've got to do this, all of this action, 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 you know that talking bullshit stuff inside of your head. That is not who you are. That's conditioning. That is the mind's story that tries to make you feel better or maybe makes you feel worse. Instead of that, source yourself into, and for me, being able to breathe deeply now is such a gift, even though it's painful and the chest is tight. Being able to breathe. Go back home to the body. The body is the life. The body is the life experience. If you can go, my mind says this, but my body feels that or observe my body is doing that you know right here right now when i was really suffering i would lay there all i could do was lay there and breathe and go thank god i'm alive i can still breathe thank god i'm not in the hospital i can still breathe i'm breathing i know it hurts but i'm breathing you know if you can just focus on separating this is my saturn saying disassociate from the conditioned mental blah 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 and go back home into what is really happening in this moment. What is your body telling you? Yeah, what it, where can you flip it and find the lightheartedness, the, 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 the joy and the laughter? Flip it so that you can at least see a different perspective than spiraling down into the heaviness and the depths of the potential depression that is right there under the surface for so many of us because we are suffering financially, physically, emotionally, relationally, you know, if you get stuck in that conditioning and that mental headspace, you get lost and you make things worse. 
Yeah, you make things worse if you believe the mind story. Now, let's go into the Splenic Center. In the PDF, when you click the link here, you'll be able to go to an article I wrote for Human Design or for Jovian Archive on my Human Design website. This is about the well-being, immune system, protection, health, and values that are there that take us into this plane of existence that transcends the fear. Fears are the root of all innate survival intelligence. These are our body fears. So I'm not saying ignore the fear. Some of us are designed to trust our fears. So for those of you in my class here, I've got myself, Hartwell, Jalet, Lynn, and Carmel. All of us are not designed to trust these survival fears. But everybody else in this class, when you have it defined, you can trust your fears because they have their own way of of hmm, evolving, we could say, remediating themselves. They, they have a way, a consistent way that's unique to you that you're designed to have the movement of your body through this life be safe, be secure, be healthy, be aware. Now, biologically, the correspondence for this splenic center is your lymphatic and the entire immune system. We're talking a lot of different aspects of the body graph and the body here. So the question to ask yourself, if you're like me, are you holding on to things, situations, people, relationships, jobs, anything? thing that is not good for you. Because what happens when we were a child, we instinctively cling to somebody who we believe will give us safety, security. And what happens if that person is not healthy or safe, but they happen to be our parent and they're an abuser? Our, our body gets a lot of mixed sing signals and maybe we have some trauma stored within the body. And we think that this is what safety and security is. This is what love is. So we have to watch and be very patient for those of us who are the, um, emotionally defined, like myself, Hartwell, Lynn, to be able to wait for the awareness that comes. It's inconsistent when it's undefined, but it's part of what we're here to learn from the activations, the dormant potentials in an undefined splenic center are there to learn from. Now, it's not just humans that happen to learn from this. It's also that we have instincts, the design of plants, the design of mammals, the design of birds, reptiles, and fish all have this center defined in our genetic form imprinting in order to have that spontaneous in the moment, so in the moment awareness. We need to have access to this form intelligence. We cannot have access, defined or undefined, in the body graph can I have access to this form intelligence if we are not present here in the now, in the physical form? The physical form is what gives us an awareness of whether it's safe in this moment, whether we are healthy or not, whether that person is healthy or not, especially if you're undefined, you can amplify somebody else's illness. But being present in the now is a really important aspect of what the splenic center is all about. Your body consciousness, the tribal instinct for protection, the individual self-empowered intuitive knowing in this now, knowing from a body sense, maybe you can't explain, but you know something is coming. You know something is here now. You have a, a pre-connection -con or a um, pre-awareness of what is going to happen or a taste perhaps a sense of taste, a logical pattern recognition about what's to come, what's in the pattern and what will continue healthfully in that pattern. And if it's not healthy, what needs to be fixed with this pattern? When we see it outside in the collective world, how can we improve upon our survival, our not just our individual, but our tribe's survival and our collective survival. That's what this splenic center is about. It gives us the awareness to keep us healthy and alive. So what happens when we get sick? When we're sick, 
We have an ability to learn from that, right? If we get sick by something, we develop antibodies so that we can be alert to the conditions for danger of getting hit by that virus again. Hopefully, those antibodies will last us and protect us for a while. Now, they don't know if that's officially true. There's no studies having been done yet that proves that now I have antibodies or my daughter or my husband because we've had this. But hopefully, we won't get it again because the splenic center has an ability to learn, to keep up with the now. And when we're looking at handling fear, there's all kinds of fear. This fear is about being able to survive, yeah, being able to keep one's balance in precarious situations, to adapt and to thrive, to move beyond those fears. Our splenic center is a source of lightheartedness, laughter, spontaneity, and daring. Every time we face each one of our fears, so for those of us who are undefined, when we face each fear and we adapt and thrive, when we survive, we are transformed. We can transform that fear, one fear at a time. Now, laughter is the best medicine, unless, of course, you have diarrhea. That's not something that is particularly fun. Have you ever done that? It's really not that fun. Um, it's hilarious, though, right? The ancestor of ours, who would have had splenic awareness, remember I showed you the... the, the um, <laughs> development of forms, the design of forms. There we go. The design of forms a little moment ago. This splenic awareness is ancient. Four million years our splenic awareness has been around on this planet, developing, adapting, thriving. So for four million years, we've been dependent on our instincts. And in the Ashna or the conceptualization center, that self-reflected consciousness, it's only been around for 90,000 years, coincidental to when we um, mutated and we had a dropping of the larynx and an ability to form articulate communication. That's what developed our ability to self-reflect, that communication and that sharing, that communion with others. What's happening now is we're moving into an era where the spirit awareness is developing out of that motor function for the emotional intelligence. It's only been approximately 2,500 years since this started to show up, and we're in the midst of a mutation right now, in the midst of a development that gets away from the emotional wave of up and down and getting into the unity consciousness, the spirit awareness, that inherent oneness, you know, that collaboration of being a part within a whole instead of thinking that we're all isolated and we have to control and we have to dominate and we have to make people submit to our will. It's very different right now. You can hear it in uh, everyone's interests uh, for developing their spirit consciousness and their unity consciousness. Now, as far as the splenic center is concerned, Ra likes to call it a washing machine because it literally cleans out any foreign invaders, any, you know, bad guys that we might take in, the viruses, the molds, the mildews, the fungi, anything that's unhealthy for us. That splenic center is in charge of wiping out, you know, like the killer T cells that are going to annihilate any invaders. We have the lymphatic system, the spleen itself, and all of the little vessels, Ra called it like the little, you know, the lymph nodes that you have. They're like everywhere in the body. They're like little noses, all alert to the dangers. That's why when you get that shock of fear, you feel it throughout the body because this is part of the alertness to the conditions for your survival or not. We even have... Um, biologically, you know, the ability for the, the bone marrow to be part and the lymphatic ducts, ducts, the adenoids, the tonsils, the thymus, lymph nodes, this, all of this is either in the splenic center or connected to the splenic center because we cannot separate centers from each other. They're always reaching out to another and have a relationship on the other side of the channel. We'll see more about that when we talk later about channels. Now, the healthy spleen, it's not actually blue. This is just an illustration to differentiate from it from the things that are around it. But the spleen is there behind the stomach. The spleen is what respo is responsible for filtering out 
you know, cleaning out a lot of these unhealthy things. And you can see all of these different little tiny cells of the immune system that I won't go into that are also part of the immune system. So the consequences of using your energy incorrectly happens to be a lot of health issues. And if you push yourself too hard, hi, I'm constantly testing that. I can feel it right now. Um, if you push yourself too hard, then what happens is there can be a detriment to your health, to your safeties, to your security and your well-being. You get overwhelmed, you get stressed, you get exhausted, burnout, unhappiness. This is a video that's available on YouTube if you want to uh, find that. But the splenic center survival fear gates here that we're going to go into are going to help you learn how you're genetically programmed to stay alive, staying alive. And there's a coronavirus video remix, surprisingly, on YouTube if you need something to watch, um, you know, for whatever reason, laughs maybe, because we need to make sure that we're healthy. And in order to stay healthy, we have to see the lighthearted side of things. The splenic center in a healthy state gives us habits that make us feel healthy or feel good. They give us a sense of security. It gives us health and well-being. But what happens when you're unhealthy? You might have addictions, food, drugs, alcohol, anything, a person that's really, really not healthy for you. You have tons of insecurity about your survival. Am I going to make enough money? Are we going to be able to survive looking into the future? You know, that constant worry, fear, potential depression about what may or may not happen when it comes to our physical well-being and survival. So we might stay in abusive relationships even though it's unhealthy for us because we're afraid either of their survival or our survival or our children's survival. So we rationalize, justify, try to make up excuses for why we need to stay. And that's, again, mind stuff. The mind saying, hey, 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 this, the mind is convincing you to stay in the unhealthy place because what is known is usually more preferable, even if it's unhealthy or in, you know, you're feeling uncomfortable about it, what is known as a danger or a fear is usually pre preferable to the human species than the unknown. Isn't the fear of the unknown like way worse than the fear of something you've already lived with, you're already conditioned to, you're already used to? So what happens is we then suffer ill health and dis-ease, either dis-ease of the body or the disease of the form that is um, developed and you're aware of how it's not healthy. So as a disciplinic center that is defined, you're more aware, consistently aware of your innate health, your knowing in the now, your physical truth, your well-being. You need to pay attention, if you've got this colored in, to your intuition, that in the moment knowing, that felt sense of actually almost like hearing something that's just telling you, turn left, turn left, or turn right, or don't eat that, don't go into there, whatever it happens to be, it's this recognition of what is safe and healthy for you when it comes to your physical well-being, to your safety and security. So when it's defined, you can trust that initial instinct, instincts, or your intuition, whoops, or your hunches, your pattern recognition it might be taste, it might be smell. And we'll go more into that in a little bit. But that's what you can trust when it comes to the in the moment snap decisions, okay, about your health. It keeps you safe and healthy. Now, as it is defined when it comes to keeping you on the path of well being and survival, you can trust it. You can. But most people that I find that come into human design, they will ignore their instinct. They will ignore their body because so much weight has been put upon us from children time. Do you remember them telling you? Weigh your pros and cons. Write them out on a piece of paper. Draw a line down the middle. Benefit, detriment. You know, something that's going to be really bad and really good. And okay, the goods will outweigh the bad. Oh, I can live with the bad. Okay, I'm going to go with the good. The mind's rationalization. That's what you want to stay away from. You have to trust this. You have to follow your body's state of awareness, and it comes up 
differently for different people. If you don't have our sacral center, that's red square in the middle of the body graph, and that solar plexus, that other awareness center that is emotionally intelligent, if you don't have those colored in, this is your personal decision-making authority. So is it safe? Is it healthy? Go into the body, stop thinking, just follow the body. The body has the key. The body knows the way. Okay, don't go into the rationalizations and justifications, the excuses, the reasons. Follow the body no matter what. In an unhealthy state, what's going to happen is you're going to be the one in the hospital that says, I knew I should have turned left. I knew this would happen. I knew. I told you so, says your intuition, because it tells you. But you might have bit lived a lifetime. How old are you? Are you 30, 40, 50? Have you lived a lifetime of ignoring your intuitive hints or hunches, your hits? <laughs> then turning that survival fear inside of yourself and resolve the fear by avoiding them instead of facing them, taking your own health for granted, you know, the last one to go down and the, um, as far as letting yourself rest. And thinking that you can't trust your body's innate intelligence, your body's innate wisdom. You know, giving over your authority to a doctor who thinks they know better than you. Are you doing that? Are you, are you obeying somebody because they wear a white coat and they got a diploma on the wall and they say they know best when, in fact, if this is your authority, you know you best. You know you best. You can trust your instincts and your intuition and awareness. You have to learn how it speaks. <laughs> Oftentimes it speaks in lighthearted laughter, being spontaneous and daring. There's a lot of fun that is there. Well, maybe sometimes that doesn't look particularly fun. But in a healthy state, you have an ability to be alert to the conditions for danger, alert to anything that threatens your individual awareness of what is going to help you survive and thrive. It's going to give you alertness to what patterns are coming. And if you're in a healthy state, your reliable instincts provide safety and security for others. It brings you to this place of being able to dance on the edge of danger, taking the right risks at the right time. It allows you to be that spontaneous you that can be able to play the game of life and win. And then when you die, of course, all of us do, you get the death that you exactly needed in order to fulfill your purpose because all of us do come to some kind of ending. And it's not a bad thing. It's just a transition, a transformation. Death is not the end it allows you to transform the ultimate transformation into something new. So don't be afraid of that death. The splenic authority as an authority only says something once in that moment because a moment is there and it's gone. You have one chance to act on it. So you need to follow it no matter the consequences. It's about your intuition. It might speak to you in smells. It might speak to you in word pictures that remind you of the danger that is there. Oh, knock, knock. Who's there? No way. Opportunity? Opportunity only knocks once. Once here for the splenic center, once. Now, there's one place where I will say it may speak again, and that is I've heard stories where if the danger is coming, and the danger gets worse, the spleen, if it's d d attached to energy, might get more adrenalized and louder and more insistent if that danger keeps approaching. But generally, because life is so fleeting in it, isn't it? Can't it just go in a flash and a heartbeat? If you're in danger and you don't pay attention, you can just boom, hit by a car and you're dead. So you gotta follow it. Obey the instincts, no matter what, if this is your authority. So there's a um, link to an article on the splenic authority there from my website. One of the most important things to remember about the splenic center, the fears here are the most powerful fears in the body. The most powerful fears in the body. They are all attached to energy with the exception of 48 and 57, which could be attached to energy if there's streams going from the bottom of the body graph, the root center, or from if there's any um, energy from the energy resource, this, uh, 
energy resource, sacral center, there we go, sacral center over to this spontaneous awareness, there might be some juice behind it. So there's a lot of potential awareness that is there and the possibility for expression. But in and of itself, that splenic center is not a motor. It is the existential expression of a now that plants as deep a seed as it can of that fear in the moment because that's its job. So fears are, these fears, body, innate intelligence, wisdom, potential, these fears can be very, very uncomfortable because you can't go back and say, well, why are we afraid of that? What's wrong? Can we talk about this? It was sometimes this unexplainable knowing or this fear of this danger that you may not be able to explain because maybe it's not connected up to the communication and action function. So splenic beings who are asked about the fear might go into their mind for an answer and the mind has no idea, no understanding, no knowing about the spleen. It's hard to explain maybe for some people. The mind is something that will immediately get in the way for those that have the splenic authority and muddle the waters of your spontaneous knowing in the now, this need for movement or not. Okay, so to be careful to go into the body, that body, splenic authority, speaks to you through sensations of the body. There's an attunement to the taste recognition of what's to your taste and the logical patterns that are there about the future. There is the hearing, the knowing in the now that is about the acoustic vibrational frequency that you are hearing and receiving and transmitting. And it's also about the smell that is there, the smell recognition of danger, something that's spoiled, something that's rotten, something that's not sitting quite right with the body. The body knows, it has a hunch, there's something that is off. And I've put these here next to their gate so that you can look down at your body graph and see whether it's defined or not. If it's a whole channel, that's part of how you make body innate aware decisions if this is your authority especially and if it is just a gate activation like with lavina's chart then this is what i'm learning about the fear of the past the fear for you know not having the ability to be able to express the depth of my awareness the fear for failure that nothing will continue that everything will come to a crumbling halt on the path of material well-being or that I won't be able to fulfill my purpose because I need to take the right risks. And then if I do that with my mind, all of this with my mind, because I smell danger, because I have fear, those fears are amplified, distorted, and now I don't have access to my emotional intelligence because those fears exacerbated, cause emotional dilemmas within me, and now I can't see or think clearly. I can't act with clarity, with precision of the ability to have patience because that is my authority. So we need for those of you who are defined in an unhealthy state, remember, don't take your, hunt, your, your health for granted. Don't, don't not trust the body's innate intelligence or wisdom. Don't ignore your intuitive hits or hunches. Don't turn those survival fears on themselves. Don't resolve the fear by ignoring it. That's not correct for you. It's not healthy. It's not safe. But in a healthy state, you can let go of the conscious thinking mind and just act on instinct, says Obi-Wan Kenobi, because you are that source of lightheartedness, laughter, spontaneity, daring, alertness to anything that threatens our well-being. Trusting your reliable instincts and being safety and security for others is your job description. So now for those of you especially who are splenic, I hope that this has been educational for you. Remember, if you want to ground anything in your awareness about what's happened in the past, it's helpful to either write about what happened, share it with a friend through talking or through stories, however it is that you like to communicate, to bring it more to the surface of your awareness. What are your fears for survival saying? What are they telling you about your life? Waken up 
to how the survival fear generates alertness to help you protect you and keep you safe and keep you healthy. Notice how the spontaneous warnings of the splenic center are telling you something in the moment, in the now. At the end of this presentation, there's more instructions for awakening activities I can go over with you if you're interested. Now, more specifically, here let's go into the fears. In the not self or the shadow aspect state, being undefined in the splenic center means that your conscious thinking mind rationalizes, justifies, gives you reasons why you have to, must, should hold on to people. Maybe they're abusive people. Maybe they're physically, emotionally, psychologically abusive people. Hi, been there, done that that do not serve your highest and best well-being, but you rationalize it inside of your head. You hold on to the job even though it's going nowhere. You hold on to places that are not healthy for you because you're rigid and inflexible and fearful and scared. Is that you? Is that something that you are dealing with? Now, what happens if you're with somebody who has a defined splenic center, what happens is there's a pressure to be spontaneous. So you might go, well, wait a minute. No, I'm spontaneous. I adore spontaneity, providing it is carefully planned. That's, that's me now anyway. But before human design took hold, I actually made tons of spontaneous decisions in order to get rid of the fear, take the risk, take a needless and unnecessary risks with my health or my safety and security in order to feel like life had meaning and purpose. I thought that I was supposed to be spontaneous because when we are not living with awareness of who we are without the something like human design, I'm not saying human design is the end all be all, but something like human design. When we don't know that we cannot trust what the mind says inside of the head about the self, we will listen to and obey these fears because they're there. I mean, we think that we are this talking form inside of the head that, that, oh, that's me. I'm talking, right? I hear the voice. That's me, isn't it? If you're new to design, let me tell you, let you in on a secret. It's not. It's not who you are. It's conditioning. And the conditioning dynamics, again, you hold on to stuff. Have you ever been a stuff hoarder? When there's all this stuff that maybe makes you feel safe and more secure, you might hold on to habits habits that maybe aren't necessarily healthy for you, you might hold on to those people because they make you feel good or safe. And yet, do they really? Or is it just you're afraid of letting go because you're afraid that you might not find anyone better than or someone else or something new? You just want to hold on to that familiar suffering. So ask yourself, are you? Are you holding on to relationships, jobs, places, and people that are not good to you, good for you? You're clingy. Are you clingy? Do you remember being a clingy baby? I remember I was five years old and I was crying. I was very sick, feeling very unhealthy, unhappy. I'm, I'm on top of a recliner and I'm saying, I don't feel good, right? Crying little five-year-old, maybe six, but definitely in that air, ballpark. And my mom said, do you want me to do about it? She was vacuuming. And at the time, my parents, I had no idea, but they were on drugs. And it was very, very uncomfortable and unsafe and unhealthy growing up. And I didn't recognize, realize any of this until I was a mature adult and now can look back and say, oh, that's why I'm clingy. The undefined splenic center tries to hold on to anything that will give it safety, security, feeling of well-being. It will. And so you have to recognize, okay, I cannot make the decision to be clingy. I cannot make the decision to hold on. I need to recognize that I can only make decisions if I just put in this mechanical strategy, my strategy for my type and my authority or the last and final say of how I make my decisions. Use those instead of your undefined talking, talking, talking mind because the mind itself, the conditioned thinking mind, these open centers are spokespersons. They have their own spokespersons inside of you, and they speak in a language that's always repetitive. And for here, the center, it's always fearful. It's always scared. And you cannot make the decision out of fear. The fear does not, is not conducive to good health and safety and security and well-being when you're undefined. 
Do you lack flexibility? Are you rigid and inflexible? Do you hold on to that thing that is not good for you? You need to be aware that this is something that your mind does that convinces you. So the signpost of conditioning is being unable to let go, even if that person's bad for them. Again, spontaneous decision-making, needless risk-taking, associating another person's lack of well-being with you. When I was younger, I was a massage therapist, and I can remember getting sick or feeling horrible after massages because I didn't know how to keep from absorbing the other person's detox or their negative energy. They would feel great. I would feel horrible. So learning about this helps you recognize what fears are actually coming from you and what fears are actually being amplified from the world around you, whether it be a person or the world at large. Yeah, isn't there a lot of fear in the world at large right now? So the characteristics are, if you are undefined, you can read the lack of well-being in another, and you're hypersensitive to the state of your health. So for my husband, when he got sick with COVID-19, all of a sudden, I'm taking him to the hospital. He was just feeling kind of, ugh, you know, not really great. But then the next day, he says, I think you, I'm having a heart attack. I need to go to the hospital. Now, for me, I felt terribly poorly way before I was at that state of pain that he was in. And I knew that I was, I was not healthy and I did my best to take good care of myself. But what happens with the defined spleen? push themselves. Oh, I'm fine. Take the health for granted until all of a sudden train wreck and boom. Now we've got to go to the hospital. So what happens on the flip side of the signpost of conditioning? Ultimately, if you do not identify with the fears that are there as something that you need to make a decision about because they're amplified, because they're distorted, you eventually learn wisdom of what to hold on to through your strategy and your authority. I'm going to say that again because it's really, really important. You can hold on to things terrifyingly in a rigid grip that are not good for you, or you can find safety, health, security, well-being in a partner that you can trust or a person that you can trust. I trust him with my life. I can hold on to things that are good for me. On the flip side, what wisdom about what is worth holding on to and who and what brings health and safety and security and well-being, okay? So it's a different frequency when you're holding on to something that's bad for you because you're terrified versus holding on to something that's good for you because they make you feel safe, really safe and secure and healthy. So when we are undefined or open, this is a totally open splenic center. I happen to have it undefined because there are gate activations there. We can feel more secure when we're around a healthy, safe, defined splenic center, one that won't hurt us. Now, we don't have consistent access to, quote unquote, feel good in the body as in the, the body's inherent safety and security. And there's no um, need to be that take, take risks or be dangerous with the spontaneous decision-making. There's no need, right? We have to keep calm and take care of ourselves. Self-care is really important, especially for us projectors. Now, in an unhealthy state, in the not self-strategy, again, when you, when you find things that do make you feel good, oh, I date this boyfriend and he makes me feel really good in the beginning and I'll hold on to him and try to help make him feel safe and secure and help us survive and thrive together because now I found somebody that feels good and I do that just out of the mental, I have to, must, should. And the decision is I'll stay with him because I'm afraid I won't find anyone better. Will anybody love me? Maybe it'll be better tomorrow. And now what happens when it's temporarily defined by something else? You might let go of things spontaneously that actually do bring good health, safety, security, and well-being. You can see how it goes both ways. Ultimately, you always have to go back to what is my decision-making strategy? If you're a mental projector, mental advisor, you know that you have to talk things out with others. You cannot just make spontaneous choices. It's one of the worst things you can do as a mental projector. Now, as an undefined or open splenic center, I say that I pick on them because they're always going to have an undefined splenic center. You can take 
your time with what life brings you. You can feel comfortable with it, even if you're going to Costco. I wouldn't go to Costco like that, Will Smith. I would have like my face mask and, yeah, gas mask, actually. Do you know I was looking at gas masks on uh, eBay the other day, a while back when I was really, really not feeling good? The undefined and open splenic center in a healthy state uses their decision-making strategy to know what to hold on to, what to let go of. So you might be a manifester who informs in order to impact, and that's how you use your decision-making strategy. You might be a sacral generator, and you wait for that spontaneous response in order to move forward with what to hold on to and what to let go of. You might be a projector, an advisor like me, and you wait to be recognized and invited and then use your authority, whatever it happens to be, to make the decision about whether or not to go to Costco. Now, please don't wait 29 days to make the decision to go to Costco. <laughs> if you're a reflector, we know that that's not useful. But when it comes to things in life where you make the decision correctly for you, you're going to feel the comfort, the confidence, the clarity. You're going to hear it come out of your mouth. Whatever it happens to be for you, how you make decisions, there will be no question, no argument. There, no, there won't be need to be any reasons why you have to, must, should make this decision or not because you feel comfortable, you feel confident. You are aware that you're making a decision that is correct for you. And ultimately, doesn't that serve the greater whole? We cannot self-sacrifice ourselves because we need to make sure that we take care of ourselves first. Now, the splenic center conditioning dynamics is, again, there's pressure to be spontaneous, to have a feeling, felt sense, a feeling secure and safe. And sometimes we might let those things go that are healthy for us or good for us because of false sense of security. So when I got my reading between myself and my husband, I weren't married at the time, but uh, an analyst, Becky Markley, I remember her clearly saying, do not make spontaneous decisions. You know, if he asks, do I want to go jump out of an air airplane? I know I need to wait because it's not about making spontaneous decisions. Always waiting for me, especially wait for invitation, recognition, wait for clarity. Now, the signposts of conditioning, again, are you rigid and inflexible? Are you unable to let go of someone, even if they're abusing you? This is where we find abuse. Hi, been there, done that. There's spontaneous decision-making and risk-taking and associating the other person's lack of well-being as something wrong with you. That's conditioning. Now, again, conditioning isn't bad or good. It just is what it is. We learn through the conditioning, but we cannot make the decision from the conditioning. And that's the point I want to make because it's a fine line between security and paranoia. Now, this actually was funnier when we put this in here. Nowadays, it's like, oh my God, I'm paranoid because those people are definitely within six feet of each other. And there's definitely air particles exchanging, aren't there? Learned a lot in the last few weeks. So if you're not in a relationship that's good for you and you think inside of your head, I can't say that, it might upset them and they'll leave me, I'll be alone. I can help them change, let's go to therapy, that could help, things are gonna get better, we have to stay together for the children's sake. You hear that voice inside of the head? That's never your authority, not with anybody, even mental projectors, you have to hear yourself sounding board, talk it out with other people in order to make the decision that you trust. This is enlightened selfishness. Ra called this system, um, and there was a program even, yeah, about enlightened selfishness. Let go of those people who are not healthy for you. I'm inviting you, if you are right now in an emotional, um, I say emotional because they are, but in a dangerous situation where somebody is abusing you, let go of them. You do not deserve to be abused. Let go of the fears that you need them or that they need you. Let go of trying to be perfect if you need to stay together. No, actually. Or that you have to be perfect in order for everything to go right. No, actually, no. 
Let go of playing games with life and death or your fears of what tomorrow will bring. It's not here. Yes, it may happen that the stores close down and that there, are no, there is no food. Have you seen the shelves in some places of the country, you know, going to Whole Foods and no meat whatsoever? What? Really? Let go of the fears of what tomorrow will bring and follow your decision-making strategy no matter what. Because... Sometimes what happens is, and especially if it's totally open, my daughter is like this, absolutely, utterly fearless, not knowing what to fear, or on the flip side, in shock, absolutely terrified of everything and anything. So that's one of the things that you're here to learn from. Now, if you have a totally open splenic center, this is the deepest area of your potential conditioning and the greatest area of your potential wisdom. This is where you're here to learn to be very, very, very wise. Not specific about any of those fears, but wide in the fullest, wise in the fullest range of the spectrum of all the fears that one could possibly fear because in some past experience of life, you mastered those fears. So this life, you're not working on a specific fear. Therefore, when something comes into you, a person, the transit, you amplify that perhaps like nobody's business, and you get terrified of something, but you're not sure what it is because you're overwhelmed by all these fears. You don't know how to label it. You don't know how to name it. You don't have anything solid to grasp onto as far as what is this fear about, so you cannot. I hope I'm showing you mechanically why you cannot trust your mind and its fears about responsibility. It's fears about the past. It's fears about failure. It's fears about what tomorrow may bring. What's going to happen? It's fears about dying before you've achieved your purpose. It's fears about not being able to have what it takes to move forward in the world, to identify with the logical stream of awareness that leads us to success and development of talent and skills. That insecurity that you have about, you know, your mother or your father, your fears, your Fears for parents or government, fearing authority, challenging authority, those are not places you make your decision. You can get bombarded, though, overwhelmed by, be afraid of everything or nothing. I remember watching my, I think she was six or seven, child <laughs> walk along the edge of a cliff, totally oblivious, you know, one, three, no less, manifesting generator with emotional authority and just teeter-tottering along the edge. Oh my God, I was so scared for her, but she was just oblivious. So it can seem like you're not protected in the world when you're undefined here. And here's the wisdom of our ancestors and their social distancing. There's the six feet, hey, three feet on this side, three feet on the other. By the way, apparently this COVID-19 moves beyond six feet. That's not enough. Really keep your distance. If you're feeling inadequate or that you might fail, that not self-talk inside of the head about the self. Do not listen. You know what you do? Like I mentioned before, if you remember nothing else, write it down. My mind thinks I'm afraid that I'm not going to survive this COVID-19. So what? Oh, well, that's my you know, recognition now. In the th midst of it, in the throes of it, when I was having trouble breathing and it felt like I needed to go to the hospital, but I was terrified of going to the hospital because my husband had already gone and I'd seen what they did to them. I didn't want to go to the hospital. I hate hospitals, especially the bills that come afterwards. When I was in that mode of what if I die, you have to go into my mind thinks I might die. Well, the mind thinks is terrified of its demise anyway. It thinks it might die. So what? The body dies. We know the body dies. My mind thinks I might die, but my body is breathing. Yes, it hurts, but my body's breathing. And I've got this. Now, one of the things that I really found very helpful was one of those heated, um, you know, tourmaline jade mats with the um, light and the heat. It really helps with the pain. It felt like sharp knives inside of the chest like sharp daggers being stabbed inside of the chest. And that was the one thing that really, really helped. So I'm laying here with this. At least I have the comfort of this mat. At least I have a roof over my head. At least I have the ability to breathe. At least I'm not intubated and, you know, trusting the doctors so, so that they would intubate me.
At least I'm not getting anybody else sick. At least I'm still breathing. Differentiate between the mind, oh God, what if I fail? And what the body is doing. It's a different story. So if anything on this page, you're undefined here, and it triggers your mind and it triggers your fear, write it down. I can't do that because I don't have enough depth. I feel inadequate. I'm afraid of what's going to happen in the future or maybe criticism, criticism, too much self-criticism. I can't take that on. I'm afraid of the responsibility. Or I have to take that on. Someone has to be responsible. If I let go of this job, I won't find another one that pays as well. If I stay in this job, I have to stay in this job because my boss is, is going to, you know, allow me to have this job, but I let him abuse me, but I don't care. I, at least I have a job and other people don't have a job. They, don't, they can't go to the work even. At least I have the job. I'm sure that working conditions are going to get better. They have to. They must. They should. I'm not going to do that thing because I'm terrified. That I, if I try something new, I might fail. I'm going to make this spontaneous decision, take this risk to feel good or make the fear go away. You might be a, a risk taker, a gambler, either literally or figuratively, with your life or your money. I can't do that because I'm afraid. I'm scared. I'm fearful. You're terrified. You're, you're up at night obsessing about all the things that may happen or all the things that are happening out there. One of the dangers for me is getting distracted by power, who's up, who's down, who's got it, who's not, who's sick, who's not, and the news. Instead, going back home to, personally for me, what is this body feeling? Personally for me, what can I do now in this moment? Remember, it's about the present. So be aware. If you are not aware, what happens is all of this gets amplified. So in the amplification, Maybe healthy habits to pick up from your husband or wife or your family, whatever. You feel good, sense of security, health, and well-being. In the amplification, you can have the unhealthy addictions, the insecurity about the, the survival, the constant fear, our abusive relationships, our ill health and dis-ease. It happens. Now, the true self is you have a healthy way. Your decision-making strategy, your strategy and authority, strategy going with the type of person that you are, that you can trust your energetic nature, your frequency of your being, and the authority or the place within, it's either a place within your body or a process that is an interaction with others or the world at large with some time. That authority is how you handle and address each of those different fears that you have. That's the true self, the wisdom potential. Addressing the fears when they come up, when it's time, when it's correct for you. <laughs> it took me so long to figure out what the heck is this picture that Fran put in here. And I finally realized, oh, the head, it's inside of a pipe for this lion, I guess. So the true self recognizes what fears are yours, and what fears you're picking up from others and the environment. So these in your design are conditioning receptors. Why are they conditioning receptors? They are planetary aspects that are sitting there within a function, a center of your body that is there to learn about that center, that function. So any time it gets hooked up, turned on, activated, out come these fears. You get this hypersensitivity or this alertness to whatever danger that is there. It gets magnified. It gets distorted. Those are your fears, but they're not where you place decisions. They're fears that are amplified from the environment. So there's a common misconception in human design. I want to make sure I get this really clear for those of you who are in class and, of course, anybody who's new to design. Everybody looks at this and goes, oh, that's my not self. And actually, how can we disconnect whatever activation that is there from the holistic being that you are? What's really not consistent to you is any place that is open, the undefined channels or even gate activations. That is not consistent 
to you. But my 21 gets turned on consistently anytime the heart center gets activated. And that is what I'm learning about in this life. So if somebody invites me to help them take control of their finances, I can give advice and guidance if they've recognized and invited me and I'm emotionally clear. I've been there, been there, done that, lived to tell the tale, third line, trial and error, because I have that desire to be of support in the implementation of whatever the rules, the laws, what we need in order for us as a tribe to survive. So it's not just about that person, but who do they care for? Who's part of their family? What are they responsible for? Do you know what I mean? So don't ever look at this and go, ooh, I remember doing this when I was a, uh, not a kid, but yes, a kid in human design. <gasps> That's what's wrong with me. Oh my God, no wonder. Oh yes, that's what's wrong with me. That's my not self. <laughs> you know, this blubbering, poor me, why me stuff. Oh crap, I got that. Well, that's my problem right there. There's the problem. You know, always looking for the blame. So don't think that there's something wrong with you here. Just recognize. It's all about awareness, this whole game of human design. It's about developing the awareness of your differentiated perspective of who you are for yourself, if you're a generator, for the other, if you're a projector. Yeah? What fears are you picking up from others and the environment? So if I'm with my husband, we're driving down the road, and all of a sudden, maybe there's a, a cop driving by, <laughs> and I get this sudden shock and fear of authority, I know that I am going to be amplifying his fear, because that's not something I have consistently within me. It's not something that I am always conditioned by, like I am, of my fear of dying before I've achieved my purpose. That's part of where I fulfill my purpose, with people who need or want or desire to take risks and looking for their passion and looking for their higher purpose, not work purpose, but higher purpose. That's part of what I'm here to learn from so that I can advise them to become leaders and authoritative figures if they're called out to be so. Now, the undefined solar plex, uh, splenic center wisdom potential, your true self. I put this big bold. You can sense when someone or something is not good for you in the wisdom potential. And when they are good for you, you know how to hold on to them. You're very aware of your own health and what your body needs because you have been learning about that your whole life. This is where you're going to school. And here's a little quote that... Um, Fran put on here, I'm slowly learning that some people are not good for me, no matter how much I love them. I can love anybody. I don't have to trust them. I don't have to like them, but I can love them for the position that they hold in the place of the totality because they exist. But I don't have to attach myself to them and subject myself to their rule or submit to their needs. I can be my own authority. Can you? Or do you give your authority away to your dog, your government, your friends, your family, everybody else? Can you be your own authority, your own authority that dictates you and your life? The true self has the potential to be very wise about health and if others are healthy. The wisdom potential into recognizing what is healthy or not. You can learn a lot about well-being and the immune system. What are you selling here? You're selling safety and security if you're undefined here. Remember, if you haven't come across this concept yet, there might be some new people in the room. If something is undefined in the function, in the center, looking at the body graph like a business map. That center or that function is potentially a profit center for you, you, the business of you. So here, what are we selling? What really brings safety, security, health, well-being? The wisdom potential of that is where you can profit, where you can make money, okay? Where you learn wisdom about how to make money. Now, hi, oh my God, am I dying? Not self, the nine, the not, it's not like it's a bad thing. It's just something that you don't have to, it's not reliable, it's not trustworthy, so therefore you don't make decisions on it. But I'm laying there, and what if it's not just a cold? Oh my God, I have to call the doctor, my head hurts, maybe it's a tumor, is it a rash? It's meningitis, am I dying? Is it COVID-19? You know, that fear spikes cortisol inside of your body, and that is what lowers your immunity. 
I remember um, when I was really, really not feeling um, well. And this one time, it was three weeks ago, I believe, my friend um, Carla would remember because she's the one person I wrote, I'm scared. <laughs> I was really, really scared. I can still feel the fear and the, the tears, you know, the, the body. I could feel the malaise. I had to look up this word because I'd never experienced it before in my life, this malaise, the fear of the body dying. And I could see how in the future, at whatever point when the body is tired and the body is done, I could see myself letting go of the body because that pain and that fear, it's just, it's so much, it's overwhelming. And to remember, she, she said, raise your vibration, you know, love, do whatever it takes to get into the state of love, get out of the state of fear because the fear spikes cortisol and that lowers your immunity. Now there's some other things that I want to tell you about that I learned about. There's a lot of stuff in this presentation. We'll keep going. I'm fine. Hopefully um, for those of you that are not on camera, you can take your break if you need it. I just need uh, to get some I think, water. In a healthy state in the open or undefined splenic center, in a healthy state, you can learn to take your time and be comfortable with whatever life brings you, whatever confrontation of the fears that are there that are necessary, whatever the situational experience, whoever, whenever, whatever. You take your time instead of knee-jerk reaction out of fear. You use your decision-making strategy to decide what to hold on to and what to let go of. You're comfortable with the state of your health and your well-being. You're comfortable with how you take care of your body. You learn about taking care of your body, that your body is a temple, that your body needs to be taken care of. And you confront when the, the fears when it's appropriate. So in this next section, I have a bonus part of this that is a little bit above and beyond what I normally do in, in a human design, living your design course. Because of the COVID-19 and, you know, in the beginning, the mind said, oh my God, I've got to warn everybody about the dangers. When I took my husband to the hospital, I sent out an email to my list and I said, oh my God, come to this presentation because I need to tell you some stuff. And then I got sick. And so finally I'm back and able to share with you some of the experiences that I've learned from. Hi, I am a cross of contagion. Cross of contagion, innocent instrument of fate who can step in and change the fate of others through learning, change the fate of others through learning, personal experience and discovery. So I'm going to share with you as much as I can uh, remember to share about some of the things that might be helpful in you understanding um, how to go about moving forward, living your strategy and authority. Because if you do that, you can strengthen your ability to survive and thrive. Now, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get ill. I saw somebody, somebody messaged me and said, hey, did you know that this person is saying, if you're not self, you'll never get ill? I'm like, great. <laughs> no, actually, that's like, that's as silly as saying, if you're not self, if you're not not self, if you're true self, you're never going to die. No, we all learn. If you're undefined here in the splenic center, you're learning. Wherever you're undefined, you're learning. But in a, an undefined center, you're learning more. You're learning more. So here, let's talk about the learning of the splenic center survival instincts, the COVID-19 bonus section. Now, there are some links in here to stuff on Jovian, very interesting things that they posted, like this chart of, I think it was approximately when it first, this COVID-19 first showed up. And you can see here that the splenic center is defined. And we also have um, the heart center, the sacral center. And Ra put out a lot of information back when bird flu the bird flu pandemic was happening. And we have some recordings that you can listen to uh, to be able to help explain that. I'm not going to explain it because he's the master. He's the one with the system. But here is one of the quotes I want to highlight. And there's two links where you can go listen to uh, different times he talked about the bird flu. In a changing world, there are going to be new demands on our immune system to keep up. And this is a rapidly changing world just from our technological viewpoint because of how many people are traveling and how quickly things can spread. That there's so much more there. One of the things that he did say was that 
our immune system, our global human immune system is failing, that we're not as healthy, we're not as robust as we used to be. And one of the reasons for that, he says, now this is not any of my information, it's all prophetic and raw, but he says that with the changing times, remember how I was talking about the solar plexus development and its mutation? In 2027, which is about seven years from now, there's going to be a shift in the energetic background frequency, and it's bringing in a new kind of human. In human design, we say that in 1781, coincidental to the discovery of Uranus by Sir William Herschel, we had a mutation on this planet. We went from seven-centered humans to nine-centered humans. And this nine-centeredness, this body that we live in, is an inter interregnum is the word that Ra used. An interregnum, a transitional form where we're living in a body that isn't at its highest expression of what it's here to be. So the, the human populace is dying out and this new kind of being is coming to the forefront and they're going to be start. They're already failed mutations right here on this planet right now. But what's happening in 2027 is they're going to be some who are born with a very different kind of vehicle. And so this time that we're in right now, there's a lot of mutations that are happening. And it's nothing, nothing to be scared of. It's nothing to be afraid of. You know, We don't have any way of stopping the mutation. It's part of our nature. If we did not mutate as humans, we would not be able to keep up with the times and thrive. So as a joke, things you need, love and other things. Love, source the Beatles. Um, in this presentation, I'm going to talk a bit about the personal love of the splenic center and the love gates, because in the kind of love that is here in the splenic center, it's about bonding. It's about bonding success. As we move forward into the future, we know, all of us know, no man is an island and no one can only survive for themselves. We're all in it together that common you know, thing that is happening. But we also need each other. We literally need each other. It's part of our nature as humans. So we're going to talk about those two kinds of loves and talk about the specific fears again, but from a deeper perspective. So again, if you're new, if you don't have your chart, please have your chart in front of you so that we can speak to that. And I want to show you something that I usually um, don't put until rave cartography further down the road of the educational program. But this is really, really fascinating and interesting, where if you take a look at this gate 46 right here, which is one of the love gates that's in the G center, it is the love of the body. Rock called it the mother of all physical fears. And this is because it's the lead hexagram of those following seven gates that are all within the splenic center itself. So the splenic center purpose... On this side of the wheel, it's a um, quarter of the wheel that is the quarter of duality. And this is about purpose fulfilled through bonding. So our splenic center purpose is fulfilled through physical bonding. <coughs> if one of you, any one of you, has a personality sun that is within this splenic center, your purpose is fulfilled through physical bonding. It's fulfilled through either learning about the fears, if you have an undefined splenic center, or it's about providing safety and security for others if you have one of these fears defined in a channel. Okay? If you have one of these fears defined in a channel, that's your way of resolving the fear. And we're going to go into each of these fears. The first fear of what your designs to be afraid of, to learn about if it's undefined or to broadcast through working through the instinctive, intuitive awareness in the now and, and broadcasting the resolution of that fear through your response or through your awareness, through your advice, through your guidance, through your in informing in order to impact whatever it is that your type is. This is the thing that you're designed to be afraid of. Remember that fear is the seed of awareness. There is no body innate intelligence without fear. If you're totally oblivious, you don't know what to fear, how long are you going to last? Yeah? 
You could fall, walk up, off a cliff because you have no idea that that fall could kill you. So fear is the seed of awareness. These are our survival instincts. We call it as a function. The root of all body intelligence, so we saw the root of all fears was the 46, the lead hexagram. But the 50 here is the gate of values. This brings a fear of responsibility. This is the source of our body's awareness intelligence. It is the root of the body's awareness intelligence. Now we have the fear of authority that is a potential awareness of what needs to be corrected and the fear of inadequacy that is a potential awareness of the solution that needs to be projected. We also have the fear of tomorrow that is the possible, sorry, this one is possible expression, possible expression of the awareness of what to fear, what may or may not happen tomorrow, a fear of the future. And then down here, we have the potential awareness of what makes life meaningful, what makes us feel as if our lives struggle has purpose or meaning in life. It says fear of death, but really it's fear of dying before you've achieved your purpose. And then last but not least, these two fears here, the fear of failure, gate of duration, gate of continuity, the fear of failing to rise up, to transform, not just for ourselves, but for our, our tribe so that all of us can be protected, all of us can survive and thrive. The fear of the past brings not just a fear of your own past, but a fear of our genetic past. It's a memory gate. It has its ability to smell, smell the potential for success. Okay, so these are our fears that you're designed to be afraid of and resolve if you're defined. That resolution comes through your own process of authority. And if it's undefined, you're learning wisdom about these fears. And this is part of where you can profit. So this is living your design for projectors and part of the profit potential secrets. We'll coach you on that when it comes time on Thursday. So here's a video from Ra. Ra gave us some wonderful resources, tons on Jovian Archive, where you can find the um, free enter what web resource library or something there's a ton of resources there but here's one of the ones i just pulled from youtube you can find it survival fears you are what you think yeah you make up the world you make up your life you live it all out in your mind without that there's nothing there's no maya there's no movie maya the world of illusion the refinement of this body this instrument is everything the mind both blinds and reveals our personality the soul, the consciousness, is something that is deeply incompetent, he says. And here we are with all this promise, incredible promise, this fantastic promise of cognition and awareness. And as you can see, you look at the world around you, you can see right away this is something nobody has easy access to out there. The homogenized world is a deadener. It's a conditioner. So if you are addicted to the fears of the world instead of going into, what am I personally here for? What am I here to be personally aware of? You can get conditioned by all those fears, and here's a great example. All of the world sells out of toilet paper. <laughs> I thought that was freaking hilarious. So now here's the link to the coronavirus bird flu connection. Uh, he talks about gate 44 and gate 26 so that you can learn more about um, the bird flu talks. This is one of the transspecial gates where we have this connection between us and birds, reptiles, and fish. Now you can see that raw had an aspect of that. Here's Raw's chart. If you want to add it to your My Body Graph, you can just click on the link. And the survival awareness streams or the splenic awareness streams are what brings us to this level, this ability to survive. I called it the drive to survive because here's our drive and stamina. And here we have the energy moving up through the awareness center to have expression. That's what is required of a splenic or any awareness stream is that we have the pressure, the awareness, and the expression trait. So we have the awareness stream of taste we're going to talk about. 
We have the awareness stream of intuition, and we have the awareness stream of instinct. The instinct, the smell potential, the intuition, the hearing or acoustic awareness, the taste, the pattern recognition. Okay, that's how you remember those. Now at the root, again, at the root of the splenic awareness, it's not a stream because a stream requires pressure, awareness, and expression. <coughs> The gate of values, Rob would call them the enforcers, I put this picture in here, uh, it brings a fear of responsibility. It's your awareness to be responsible for the preservation of others or not. It's the fear of taking on the responsibility or maybe taking on too much responsibility due to fear. So in the mind state, if you have the other side of the activation of that channel, you're open to amplifying all kinds of fears of responsibility. Yeah, and so the mind, when I got, my husband got sick, I took him to the hospital. I'm like, this is here, this is it. I need to share this with everybody. I need to care for my tribe. I have to educate them. That's what a 50 is about. Rules, laws, protection, really important. I have to, I must, I should, right? The mind thinking, oh my God, I have to hurry. I have to get it done fast because it's really important that we survive and thrive, right? The mind, the mind thinking it's my responsibility to get the word out there. I'm a contagion, aren't I? I'm here to educate, I'm here to help. No, waiting for recognition invitation, waiting for emotional clarity. It took me five weeks to get here. Here a friend added in, I don't know how to pronounce that, hypogaiophobia, fear of responsibility, it's a thing. There's where it comes from in the body graph. Now, when we're looking at the body graph, there is politics that moves through this. The right wing, people who are all right wing, hey, there's Donald Trump with his 2145. They're capitalists. They're designed to be that by nature. This is the stream of capitalism. Okay, so when you're looking at your design, look down at your design and see, do you have hooks? Activations, I have three, one, two, three gates, some with multiple times, where I am about learning about educating through capitalism, learning about what it takes to make money, being your own boss. All 21 threes, by the way, must be your own boss. You cannot have anybody breathing over your shoulder. That's one of the things that we're learning about in this stream of awareness this is about where we find the capitalisms, capitalisms, capitalists in our society. That's their job, okay? So that enforcer, how do we control people? We educate them, isn't it? How we control them? Factual education, the flow of the logic circuitry feeding into the awareness of the rules and the laws, what we need to enforce so that people obey, <laughs> obey the tribal rule, yeah? We have to survive. People like us, we're good Americans, we're gonna stay home, make sure that nobody gets sick. Well, it's not really working out so well, right? Because now everybody's going back because we have to open up our economy, yeah? And some people, here in Sedona, things have been closed down, but there's a ton of, of uh, what do you call them? Tourists <laughs> cruising around, going into groups of people, and what are you going to do about that? You can only do so much. Factual education, that's how they attempt to control us. Is it correct? Yeah? It seems to have worked, hasn't it? Yeah, to flatten the curve. <laughs> I liked this one. Uh, I expected my apocalypse outfit to look like this, but yeah, it's just my sleeping pants. Now, one of the really, really interesting things I came across in my studies is and this is raw, this is raw's material, glutamine as an amino acid is there in gate 50, okay? This is where it is an amino acid, 44 and 50. It's important as an amino acid. It's the most abundant amino acid with many functions of the body. Hey, guess what? It's stored mostly in the lungs and the muscles. COVID-19 makes you really, really, really tired. It really, really drains you. And it's stored, this glutamine, stored in your lungs. And lungs is where it, gets, where it attacks us. 
where it really affects us. It is a building block of protein and a critical part of the immune system. Remember, this is the immune system. So glutamine has a very special role in intestinal health and brain function. Yeah, we've been seeing strokes even in younger people. We've been seeing intestinal problems even in people affected by COVID-19. Now, your body naturally produces this amino acid. It's also found in many foods. More on that in a little bit. I am not telling you to go out there and buy glutamine and take it so that you can prevent COVID-19. I'm just telling you where it is, okay? And this is part of the splenic ego stream. So if you have aspects of this, you are part of what is here to transmit things to others. Now, how do we transform as humans? Transformation and transmission. How do we transform as humans? In order to evolve can keep up with the times. We have to have the encounter with these things, don't we? You know, things shift, things mutate us, and we need to keep up with that. So we have to evolve with it. We have to evolve. So transmission is fueled by the awareness of what can be transformative, and this is what ensures the tribe's survival. Hi, I have parts of this awareness stream of instinct. I have the smell potential for what and who can transform and, and rise up. I have the smell potential, the wisdom potential. It's what I'm here to learn about and teach about how to get the best out of everyone, how to manipulate that other in order that we all survive and thrive. And that's part of my material way. It's part of how I'm here to, to be able to transmit. So one of the really interesting things is, hey, if you've got this channel, you're a transmitter. Even if you've got just part of it, my husband and I have this together. We got it from my daughter. She has this 26 as well. We're transmitters. I'm a transmitter of this COVID-19. Hey, I'm a contagion. Oops. So I had to make really sure that I didn't get out there. All of you with fourth line bodies. Fourth line is designed to influence its network. Fourth lines really get the sicknesses transmitted. Watch. Make sure you're following your own decision-making strategy about any of this, yeah? Don't not go out or go out because Levina said so. Always go back to your own authority. Now, there's these instinctive fears that are here, like I mentioned. <laughs> I love this picture. Fear of the past, like dying out our society, not society, but the actual tribal element of who we are, our identity as a tribe dying out that fear of responsibility, that fear of failure. These are all instinctive fears. The instinctive fear that comes from the gate of continuity. You can trust your instincts to achieve and succeed if this is defined in you. You can trust your instincts, your smell, literally smelling what has the potential for success or failure. In this channel of transformation, if this is your authority, you have the ability to transform, to support the transformation of your tribe. This is a design of being driven, where we have the gate of ambition, which is part of the process of deep transformation because it's in the quarter of a mutation, quarter of the wheel that is about mutation. And then over here again, like all splenic gates, we have duality, and purpose fulfilled through bonding. We have a quarter of the wheel that is about bonding, bonding with those that we can help rise up, that we can help succeed, that channel of transformation that is about ego support, part of the ego support circuit. So the smell potential here is what can continue. The fear is what can fail. The awareness of what can be transformed, who can rise up, what can help you transform and rise up. I find so many human design people who are either 32s or 54s or the whole thing. Might be because this is my nodal environment and I'm always meeting up with other 54, 53s because I have the 42, 32 as part of my nodal access. But man, that fear, that potential awareness, that smell potential for people is really powerful here can really bring you to a level of awareness. And what is the seed? <gasps> what if I fail? What if we fail? What if we fail? And what happens if it rules your mind? The fear of failure holds you back from what you've recognized and invited to do, what you're emotionally clear on. That fear of failure holds you back. What does it smell like? 
It smells like the stench of embarrassment to me <laughs> because I have this deep, deep, deep fear of embarrassment. I, meaning conditioned mind, thinking I. Because are they going to laugh at me? What are they going to think of me if I try again and I fail again? That failure is not where you make your decisions if you are undefined there. Now, here is the asparginine, okay, as amino acids. Now, the reason I'm giving you these amino acids is so that you can see if you have a need for them or if it's defined in you, there's a need for them, or if it's undefined in you, if there's an inconsistent need for them because it's part, if, if this is your definition, it's part of what fuels you to access your authority, the fuels that feed your body and its innate intelligence. The differentiation of the form requires that you have the right fuel. And this is not about, you know, diets or you have to eat this, you must eat that. Always go back to your decision-making strategy. How you take in fuel for you can be found in the primary health system, which I'm not going to go into. But asparginine is known for its key role in the biosynthesis of glycoproteins. In addition, it is also essential, essential for the synthesis of many other proteins. Human nervous system needs this amino acid in order to be able to maintain an equilibrium. So the foods rich in asparginine are dairy, whey, beef, poultry, eggs, fish, seafood, asparagus, potatoes, legumes, nuts, seeds, whole grains, and soy. And I put a little asterisk there just to let you know that soy is a very strong estrogen. It can throw your hormones out of balance. So to be very careful and to be aware. Again, not telling you to supplement, just telling you about the awareness of what amino acids are here that we see in the human design system. Now, here is Nicolas Cage. Here he has, an, as an example, his only channel is the channel of transformation, a design of being driven, his superhero strength. And we get the superhero comment from Jenna Oblivion, director of Human Design America. Superhero power is instinctive ambition. This drive is fueled, again, by the instinct of what can be transformed. It's very ambitious, instinctive ambition. This motivated by a need for other people to recognize you for your work, for your efforts, in order to better your position in life, to become someone, <laughs> to become someone. Yeah. And on the other side here, we also have um, Emma Watson, Harry Potter fame, the drive to be recognized. Yeah, it's also the drive to be recognized. All of these drive to be recognized, the projected channels that have drive and stamina defined to them. We do really need to be careful of workaholism here. Now, that might also be a stress reliever, so you throw yourself into your work. Because remember, this is the stream of capitalism. This is about the tribe, so it's about healthy interdependence. Yeah, this is about supporting others and reaching their potential is part of the success secret that I'm giving you right now. Support others. It's not about your personal ambitions. This is not individual. This is tribal. This is about you being recognized, invited, and spontaneously aware that this is where you need to go. This ambition and drive in the social context, Ra says, the archetype of the concubine that gradually moves up the ranks of society, finally become the empress. There's a great deal of adrenalized pressure here, adrenalized bitterness, if not recognized and invited, if not making a decision that's to the point, in the moment. Yeah? So in the tribal stream, the instinctive fear, the gate of alertness brings you an awareness. Trust your instincts. What are people asking of you, recognizing, inviting out of you? What do you instinctively have a nose for? 44, business, the talents, the love of the talents of others, the smell potential, what can, can succeed materially is part of what this brings to the table. The channel of surrender is design of a transmitter. This brings us strength in sales, in convincing people, in marketing, when it comes to being able to sell somebody on the trial, you can see that the gate of alertness or coming to meet is, again, here where it's about duality and purpose fulfilled through bonding. And that 26, again, up here in transformation, where we have the taming power of the great. 
Yeah, this deep ability to annihilate, like with a killer instinct, any objections to the other person being convinced that this is the best, that we are the best, that we have the best, that you need the best, because this is about being the best, interestingly. So now this is a really interesting place, this splenic instinct and this gate of alertness. I put eggs here. <laughs> And there's another reason I put this here that I'll, I'll share with you with the nose in a moment. But the fear of the past and the awareness for the smells and potentials of talents of others are not loving their talent. And that fear, that past baggage, again, genetically speaking, might catch up with you. It can speak to you in sense. So your body is remembering. Isn't, isn't it true that if you go to a smell that you remember from childhood? I remember my grandfather wearing Old Spice. And I smell Old Spice and I think of my grandfather and how he worked at a you know, um, hotel and how we would go there on the weekends and have brunch and swim in the pool. I mean, it, all these memories come rushing back. Smell is very deeply connected to memory. So this smell can speak to you in sense. And I had a client, a uh, student former in this projector success secret. She's trying to go like, well, how does, I don't understand. How do I follow my instincts? I don't get it. I don't get it. And then all of a sudden she got it. And she said, oh, wait a minute. Somebody was trying to convince me of something. And all of a sudden I smelled stinky cheese. And I was like, bingo. Because she was like, hmm. No, it, your nose might wrinkle up at the, at the way that somebody's talking to you about something because they're trying to convince you something away or not true from your own authority. Your body speaks to you. What is it saying? Can you listen? So again, we're back to glutamine again with the 44, right? Found in many foods. Now here's a little bit about the foods, and this is from Livestrong. Animal proteins, beef, poultry, pork, fish, organ meats, all sources of glutamine, okay? So these raw leafy vegetables have high levels of glutamine, but the heat destroys the glutamine. So you want to eat those glutamine-rich vegetables raw when possible, all right? So you can search that up on Livestrong to find more information. Now, the 44 is a personal love gate, finding successful love, love through material success. It's not about, you know, blame, shame, guilt, fault, but the beauty of the mutual wealth for the support of the tribe that you share and support each other, that's what we have here. Loving their talent, wanting to support them, love of succeeding together. This leads us again to capitalism where we have things and we own things. So that successful love is part of your nature if you've got it in your activation. It's not about mine and yours. It's about ours. It's about I love you. You know, together we can support each other. And it's not about if it weren't for me, you wouldn't have anything. It's not about, no, 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 when we're divorced, I get half. You know, it's about the thriving of you and your partner together so that you can find that magic and you don't attempt to control each other through money, arguing about who owns what or how to be successful together. So it's a materially successful love when you have the 44. This is the creative art of enterprise, part of the stream of capitalism. It's a beautiful, beautiful gate. Love it. So as an example, we have uh, Karl Marx, who has the whole channel doubled. So we can see that it's um, in human design language terms, we call that a full overpass because he's got a conscious aspect and an unconscious aspect. So these are people who are persuasive. And it's always about, remember, improvement, the best assessing others instinctively, yeah? Having a nose for matching them with what they need. Is it an ideology? Is it a product? Is it a job? Bringing in the money through sales? Hi, you got that channel? That's part of your job description. Now you might be saying, hey, wait a minute, I hate selling stuff. But do people come to you and do they want to know maybe your take on things? You know, what did you actually find very valuable and very useful? Are you easily able to convince people? That's what we're talking about here. Here's Whoopi Goldberg. Not designed to work eight hours a day, especially if you're a projector. This is balancing work and rest. Yeah, getting a compressed amount of stuff done in a compressed amount of time. Lots of stuff done, compressed amount of time. 
getting more done than people will do in the entire day. And here's that stinky cheese to remind me to tell you. This is your success secret. Trust your instincts. If it doesn't smell right, do not engage. Okay, do not engage. Now, we just went over that awareness stream of instinct where we have the fuel and the drive to transform or not, where we have the potential awareness, the smell potential of what can be transformed, which is translated into the memory transformation that's stored as the memory for the possible expression of the ego mechanic that is about convincing your tribe with your strength or lack of strength to apply the memory of what's going to help us instinctively, intuitively, <laughs> instinctively be aware to survive and thrive. Okay. So we have a little bit more. I'm going to go more quickly because I can feel that the energy is starting to drop for me, getting hot again. Um, I'm a cold thirst person, so heat really affects the body. The collective taste fears bring super judgmental fears, fear of authority, fear of inadequacy. Do not let the fear of being judged stop you if you have these fears, especially if this is not your authority. It's not about perfection. Progress, maybe, if you have that stream on the other side in the emotional system. Splenic center, this is our logical collective fears. So here's, as an example, do nothing. Oh my God, this is what might happen. This was a while back, so. Collective awareness, the 48 is the gate of depth. Yeah, the 18 is the gate of correction. This is about seeing. This is our visual, logical awareness for the pattern as the future marches on, marches forward. And here, what we begin with is the channel of judgment about understanding and sharing our recognition of what needs to be corrected. This is a design of insatiability in human design. We call it insatiability because it's insatiably wanting to correct and align the pattern. 58 is the joyous. It's the gate of aliveness. And the 18 is work on what has been spoiled. It's correction. Yeah, the potential awareness of what needs to be corrected, what has been spoiled. There's a need for salt here in order to digest life, yeah, the savory. So if you have that fear of authority undefined and you try to make a decision based on what needs to be corrected, what needs to be perfected, that pattern, it's not right, and you're very judgmental and you're spewing out your judgment on somebody who hasn't asked, ooh, there might be a fear of, being judged by others and too much self-judgment and everything doesn't really necessarily work out to the way that you see things should because you're making a decision from fear, that fear of authority, fear of the mother, father, fear of the government, police, what have you, whoever is judging, you think is judging you. Now that's the splenic fear of authority, correction. So we have alanine here. Look at these. So alanine is an amino acid that is used to make proteins. Our body uses it to break down tryptophan and vitamin B6. Now, remember, everyone has everything in the body graph if you're new to human design. This is a source for the energy for muscles and the central nervous system. You can get it from poultry, eggs, fish, dairy products, and some protein-rich plant foods as well. And as what this can show up like is fueling the art of mastery, talent, through recognizing what needs to be corrected, what can be improved, to see, to share, to guide, because this is projected, this is collective, this is about the logical moving forward, so that things can be safe and secure, stand up and defend basic and fundamental human rights. You have a way of guiding that. Not the specific other, remember this is collective, not judging specifically others unless they're asking for support and support asking for your seeing maybe your opinion about it really about um the whole world at large and what you see out there yeah this is uh richard bach that last one was joseph campbell and they can succeed when invited to share their tasteful judgment what's logical yeah what what is their recognition here's another example even though he played uh, Superman, Christopher Reeve, I believe, was cast really well. Look at that design. The insatiable drive to judge, to challenge, to correct and perfect the patterns of life. A dissatisfaction and with and the need to uh, challenge authorities through logic. 
the hero, yeah, five, one, a rescuer, a savior. And then we have one more, I couldn't help myself, Leonard Nimoy. I hope that I haven't taken myself seriously too often. <laughs> yeah, that remember that the Splenic Center is about the survival instincts and the humor and the lightheartedness and the spontaneous laughter. So you can correct through your vitality, 58, gate of vitality, through your love of life, when you're recognized and invited to share your logic. Isn't that great? Another one that's great. So my husband and I have this together. It, I see us judging the world out there together, and that's where it belongs, the world out there, not each other. Now, the logical fears, going back up to the 48, through that stream, now we have the possible expression of the awareness of what can be corrected and perfected, the channel of the wavelength. It's a design of talent. It brings us the well, the gate of depth, and it matches us with the 16, the gate of enthusiasm, or it brings skills so that we can identify what's on the wavelength, what's tasteful, what develops our talent, what turns that talent that repetition of the patterns over and over again into an art form, into a mastery. Here we have the gate of depth that brings a fear of inadequacy, and it brings the awareness for a possible expression of a solution or not. I, like, I would like to change that to possible. Makes a difference. Potential is down here, possible expression. Fear that you don't have enough depth and depth, seeking depth to resolve the fear, please don't make a decision based on that if it's undefined in you. Okay, that's not your authority. Now, again, we're back to alanine. Remember that this is what the body needs. Remember, everyone has everything. So I'm not saying that, oh, only for gate 48s need alanine. We all need alanine. But you might need it consistently in order to access your authority if that's your authority. And here it is with Nelson Mandela, his authority channel, the wavelength, the design of talent, mastery of patterns can transcend the pattern to create that art form. You can share your recognition. You can see, you can study, you can practice, you can master as a projector. And here's another projector, Jeffrey Wolf Green. If you're somebody who studies evolutionary astrology, you might notice how he was a logical alpha and he was very logical, skillful, expressive, identifying patterns, experimenting with the depth of practice to perfect something. This is about the perfection of a talent. And as you know, you can always improve. It's never ending. There's possible solutions that address others' problems here, if this is your channel, this is your talent, to encourage other people. Part of the way that you can encourage them is help correct and refine things to perfection. If you're recognized and invited, you're not, then people don't like that correction. Here's another example, Fidel Castro, completely identified with the logic system that you share. That's part of what the nature is here. Last here, knowing stream, the brain wave, it's penetrating awareness, gets its pressure from tenacity, from struggle to live a purposeful life. This is the awareness stream of intuition, hearing truth in the now, a lightning bolt of truth that you are aware of as an individual. The fears are, again, fear of death, fear of the future, the possible awareness Mm, the potential awareness and the possible expression. There we go. About knowing your purpose. What makes life meaningful? Why are we here? Yeah, oftentimes, sometimes we just need to know the why. If we know the why, we can bear so much more, can't we? The struggle. Trust your individual knowing. Your game playing, your risk taking, you can trust that knowing to be able to succeed on the, on the material plane as we move into the future. Last channel of struggle, last dream, where we're knowing about empowerment through the experience of being stubborn. Again, look at the, all of these channels. I hadn't noticed it before I did this presentation. They're all about transformation, the projected channels, meeting up with the bonds, the duality, the bargain that we have. So 38, opposition is the gate of the fighter. 28, it's preponderance of the great, the gate of the game player and the risk taker. This brings us a level of awareness about intuitive knowing. It even, this 28, can get the intuitive knowing of others to help it find 
its meaning in life, awareness it brings to struggle for purpose or not, higher purpose, higher calling. You might not take risks out of fear or conversely, fear that life has no purpose unless you take risks. And here are the amino acids, asparginine, what we saw with the 32. So I already read that one for you. And this is the other love gate. I love these love gates. And this is, without you, there is no purpose in living. Remember the drama of Romeo and Juliet, the passion that they had for each other? They made me watch this in school. Uh, Finding love through struggling for purpose together. I will die without you. That kind of uh, romance, you could call it. Love with purpose. It's love. Our love together has a meaning. Our love has a purpose together. There's a creativity. There's a sadness. There's a, a romance and a melancholy. It's moody because it's individual. So finding love that makes you feel like your life has a higher meaning, a higher calling. That I notice, especially I have this, it really, really lights you up when you feel that meaningfulness in the experience of struggling together to have that higher purpose, higher calling. Here's Brad Pitt as an example, the four six, choosing risks that have value instinctively, intuitively in that moment of invitation. Don't listen. They're always going to say, oh yeah, you're stubborn. Even if you've got only one side of the channel, one gate or the other, they can complain that you have, are stubborn. Go your own way. Even though you might have overwhelming odds, go your own way. Do your own thing. Recognized and invited for the big things in life. Intuitively aware. Pursue your highest calling. Be empowered to find the higher purpose. And you know, one of the things too that might resolve some of the pressure and, and stress here is play games, whatever's fun for you. Here's Jackie Chan. Yeah, you might do the physical sparring, Qigong, Aikido, Tai Chi. You might like the walks alone in nature or in silence. There might be the tenaciousness to fight for a cause that makes your life have meaning or purpose. Okay, so they're healthy outlet for physical and mental stress relief. You need that if you have any of these channels down there. So now these, this channel, just a quick note, if you look on YouTube, write channels of deafness and human design system or Lavina Archers, you'll find me talk about each of these channels. There is a level of deafness here inherent within the design because you have to, you need to be empowered to go your own direction and go your own way especially those channels, but all individual circuitry. And here's another one, individual, 57. Trust your knowing that intuition in the moment because the channel of the brainwave, knowing and empowerment, is a design of penetrating awareness that brings a level of, here we go, now we got a different one, the 20, which is about the voice in the now, and the 57, which is about the gentle, the intuitive clarity or the knowing in the now. The gate of intuition brings fear of tomorrow, awareness to hear. Is that person lying to me? I might not know exactly what they're lying about, but I know something's off because I hear the vibration in the voice. I hear the quiver. I hear the fear. They might fear what the future will bring. And so you might hold back. It's the root of our aggressive survival needs because it's part of integration as an awareness. Integration is part of the body graph, the backbone, the structure of the body graph, if you haven't heard of it yet. And again, this is alanine, okay? So meeting up with leucine on the other side, for those of you that are looking at this presentation. Now, this is my husband, and this is what empowers his own awareness of his well-being. So me as a 28, I'm always asking, inviting him to speak his truth, his intuitive moment in the moment of invitation, his intuitive awareness of what brings health and safety and security. That's part of the way that we work well together that you can't see through the um, electromagnetics in the body graph. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. It's really helpful to help us get to the core of their spontaneous intuition, knowing their impulses in the moment because they can think and speak on their feet without inner censoring, it can sometimes show up as too much information. <laughs> it's really funny. Now, the last thing I want to give you is um, a little quote from Ra. The job of uncertainty is to point you towards a mystical death. 
for the not self to die. Almost all philosophers have pointed us to the now, this funny place, whatever it may be. And yet I want you to understand very deeply the reason all of us are being pointed towards that now. All of us are being pointed towards that mystical death. The not self doesn't just slowly dissipate. <laughs> it crashes and burns. And whether that's going to be a healthy being that rises out of the ashes, well, obviously that's going to be dependent on how they've been conditioned, what they understand, whether they've been correct, all the many things to see. And this, my friends, it seems like it's a lot, but it's really just barely scratching the surface of what human design can offer you. There is so much more you can learn about in this beautiful, brilliant system. So I want to thank you for being here. I'm going to let you go for now because I can feel it's time to rest. And there's more information, jovianarchive.com, where you can hear so much more from Ra, tons of free resources. I invite you. I recognize you. I honor you, especially if you're a projector. Thank you for being here. And I will see those of you who are in this class on Thursday for our study group. Bye for now.